Well, good Taco Tuesday, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Man, <coughs> <coughs> I'm going to feel a little bit under the weather, but the Cowboys are getting on the field, of course, today, uh, <coughs> doing more of their installs. Micah Parson and C.D. Lamb are both absent, and I am done. Tracy, are we done? So done. We are so done. We worked on two houses in four days. Um, actually, physically working. Actually, no, excuse me. Two houses in five days. We put an extra day in on it. Um, on one, just me, Tracy, and uh, one of the other Hi. team leaders, Jaime, to make sure that we got her finished completely. We're not doing that tomorrow. We're, we're going to hit the road. I got a lot of road to get there, and I cannot wait to get home and sleep in my own bed, but I got to stop off close to Eagle territory. Yeah, anyway, be that as it may. Um, we have the usual Dallas Cowboys crap that we deal with, which is paying players. Um, C.D. Lamb, of course, is holding out um, and that's why he's not at practice. We don't know if that's the same case with Micah Parsons or not. Um, but Micah Parsons isn't there as well. Um, he's got the fifth-year option on his contract. So it could be possible that, you know, he plays on this year and then gets the money next year. The reality for the players is if you uh, miss – okay, this is the voluntary part of it. If you miss – the non-voluntary part, you start getting fined, and the fines are not refundable. So it behooves you to get a deal done and not miss regular time because you're talking about game checks when you start missing preseason games. Be that as it may, we have Dak Prescott. Now, here's where it gets to be interesting that um, Colin Cowherd is making the case that Jordan Love will earn more money than Dak Prescott, which right now... Here's the funny thing. This is so funny to me. <coughs> Dak Prescott's cap number this year is $55 million. Deshaun Watson's is 63 Honey? Yeah. Um, which is a higher number? $55 million or $63 million? Uh, you're right. It was 63 Okay. No, that's, that's higher. And his number is that rigidly for the next three years. Deshaun Watson, and he ain't been anywhere close to MVP since uh, before the shoe dropped in the, with the Texans. So now, the latest hottie out there that they've got is Jordan Love. Now, Jordan Love has only started one season, and this could be a case of Jalen Hurts, where Jalen Hurts really had one good season. Now, Colin Cowherd was talking about how he ranks players, um, uh, the Cowboys' dilemma, and how he ranks players in order to get paid and it, I find it very interesting it, it's a back slap on Dak Prescott of course in the end but he's making the case that you got to hold on to him let's listen in real quick before I go take a shower is Jared Goff just got paid and I was thinking about this because the Celtics Larry Bird the Larry Bird exception I'm going to get to this in a second but I'll make I'll twist it all together so if you were going to pay quarterbacks if you have Based to. on four factors, and I think most of us would agree on the four factors, which is, are you productive? Are you highly productive? Do you have success? Does your team win and win in the postseason? This isn't baseball. you got to win games when it matters, not just compile stats. Are you reliable? Are you healthy? Are you available? And number four is, do you have leverage? Every negotiation, I don't care if you're an attorney, a doctor, a quarterback, a landscaper. If you got leverage, you get more money. And if I had to take every quarterback in the league, based on those four, Mahomes is the highest paid guy in the league. The, the, the Josh Allen is two. And by number three, we can argue. I love Lamar Jackson. I'd probably put him there, but health concerns, he get hurt. And he hasn't two been great in the playoffs. playoffs. Joe Burrow. Two and four. Yeah, but he can't stay healthy. Justin Herbert, talented, but hasn't won enough. Tua, concussions? Let's be honest about that. It's a concern. Jalen Hurts, what has he done without Shane Steichen? He's had one elite year of production. 
I love Matt Stafford, but he's getting older, and he gets dinged up a lot. Kyler Murray, talent, yes, commitment, meh. Trevor yeah. Lawrence, another guy I like, but he's not as good as I thought, or as most people thought. He's good, not special, at least so far. In fact, I could make an argument, though he's not flashy, and you'll push back, that number three in terms of those four, let's look at those four again, productive team and playoff success, health and reliability and leverage, number three could be Jared Goff. Laugh all you want. Burrow's always hurt. Goff's been to a Super Bowl, lost two, and never is. So what do you do? Well, this is where Dak is interesting. Is that one of the toughest decisions in the league is Dak. When he's healthy, you can win 10-11 games. When he's healthy, 500 or better. He would have a market. <laughs> no question, the Raiders would take him tomorrow. You got that available. shit right. And the truth is, Jerry Jones is petrified of being irrelevant. Jerry's ego feeds on relevance. Dak's your quarterback, he's upright, you're relevant. What do you do with him? His record is 73 and 41. So in the NBA, they have something called the bird exception. And there's several, there's the early bird exception, there's a lot of them. What it means is, named after Larry Bird, that you can re-sign your free agents, your free agents if they've been with you for three years, and it can go over the cap. But it's called the bird exception. In the NFL, here's my new name. It's called the DAC Dilemma. The DAC Dilemma. If you're a football team that has a good quarterback, but he fills those four boxes, he's productive, the team wins, an occasional playoff win, he's reliable, mostly healthy, and has tremendous leverage. The NBA's got the bird exception, the NFL has the DAC Dilemma. What do you do when a quarterback mostly fills do? those four boxes, but he's good and you have to pay him great money? You will become exactly what the Cowboys have been under Dak. Relevant and never elite. What you can't be in this league is chaotic at quarterback. And I think that's what makes the Dak Prescott situation. He's got the leverage. He is productive. He's mostly healthy. And when he is, they win. You'd like him to win more in the playoffs, but I'd like Lamar Jackson to win more in the playoffs. I'd like Josh Allen to win more in the playoffs. The Dak dilemma is real, and it's what half the teams in this league are facing. There you you cannot be special when you pay a good quarterback great money, and once again, I think the Cowboys will be true. All right, so let me see if I get this straight. So here we go back again to the whole narrative of you can't play a good quarterback, great money. He just went through and listed, and, you know, everybody listed on there has been paid great money. Lamar Jackson's, you know, third highest. Um, Jared Goff, you know, is the second highest paid. Jalen Hurts has got, you know, fourth highest or fifth highest. Uh, Joe Burrow is number one. So which one of those guys are... <laughs> great quarterbacks because they're all getting paid the only one time it comes to becomes a problem is when it's Dak Prescott's time to get paid then we start talking about how much money you can't pay a quarterback alright good people I'm going to take me a shower get ready for our farewell dinner and um, I'll be back with you guys later I appreciate y'all peace out